Well, it's uh, about a day or so after I ended the last one. And as you can tell, I, I got sick. And the weather's turned uh, for the better for elk hunting. Last night when I was coming in, I went over the pass that is a thousand feet below where I was thinking I was going to go uh, backpack in. And it was already 32 degrees at, at 10 o'clock. And it uh, ended up raining most of the night and most of the morning. And uh, I'm just getting a game plan um, put together with the, uh, the, I don't know if you guys can see me. In a game plan put together <coughs> with uh, these maps here, satellite images here. You guys can't see that. Well, on the last trip, I made it down to these beaver ponds here. I came up over this ridge here, down across this. This is where, about where my binoculars are, and down, crossed, and then out and up and then back. And all the way back over. <clears throat> but for this trip, I'm going to try to stay out of this and stay on the ridge lines. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm using Google Maps here uh, in 3D and uh, just moving things around. And I'm going to start where my destination is and try to work my way back following ridge lines over the top of this to where the road is. I just came around the corner heading over towards where I'm gonna hunt and saw these snow-capped mountains. That's the first measurable snow of the season I think. That is pretty cool. Look way up there. And then just just down below it no snow at all. Well, I got lucky. This is an extremely coveted spot. And the guy that told me about this area, hold on, that wind's probably. So on my way in, I ran into one of the guys I talked to on my way out two nights ago. He said that uh, he's heading out and that his camping spot's open, which is an amazing camping spot. Then he proceeded to tell me how to get into his hunt spot. He told me about these tape lines where you tie the ribbon on the trees and there's a blue one that goes this way and a pink one that goes that way and there's a blind down in there. And uh, said feel free to go hunt it. So uh, I'll take you out and show you the campsite. There's my camp spot. <sighs> oh man, look at that view. Can you believe that? So I'll be hunting, um, it's, he said it's like 17 minute walk, but I'll probably go a little deeper. Just up and over this ridge. I gotta find his ribbons though. He said you just go up in there and look around and you see the blue ribbons. This is my first bit of sign. That's definitely from a big deer or an elk. Followed that guy's uh, ribbon trail for a while, and I lost it up there. Maybe it just ended. But uh, came across this trail with this on it, and I'm gonna follow it over into the ravine down that way and, and see what comes up. Now I made my way into this little aspen grove here been watching it for about a half an hour. Don't really see anything. It is 518. So I'm going to go in and look around for some sign. So it is 
7.19, the sun is down. I'm just listening. Um, there's a pretty big drainage that leads way down to a valley that direction. And the same thing over that side. Haven't heard anything all day. Sweet and sour pork with rice. Let that sit for a bit. Well, uh, that hunt ended that night. The next morning I woke up and was deathly ill. I still am pretty sick. Uh, I've got a doctor's appointment tomorrow morning at 9.40. Hopefully I'll get some prescription medicine and then I'm going to attempt to go hunting again. I've got a spot picked out that's about a half mile, six tenths of a mile in. Not too intense of a walk, um, but I plan to go in and sit there all day. I'm not going to go spotting and stalking. Uh, my upper chest is just too irritated for that. Um, but it's the last weekend and uh, I don't want to just sit home. Um, but after this season, I still have four more tags uh, to fill with the possibility of getting two more. To make. I've got three pronghorn tags. Uh, one I'm going to try to get with a bow. Um, I've got a, one white tail that I'm going to try to get with a flintlock. And then just got some information today that there's a possibility of going to Illinois um, for an over-the-counter archery um, whitetail buck tag and then also um, we like to go to North uh, do doe hunts they've got a major overpopulation problem with whitetails and pretty much out-of-staters can buy a doe tag, I think for like 30 bucks, maybe 50 bucks, unlimited. At least that's what it was the last time we went up there. Um, but you hunt on private land. So there's landowners that sign up with the state of Wyoming and they put all their contact information on the website and you call up there and say, hey, we're coming to look and uh, to, to hunt some whitetail and they said sure we have available these, these dates but that's what's coming up uh, the rest of this this year there's also a hog hunt the second week of January that I'm going to be going on in Texas if you're interested in following along uh, hit the subscribe button and also give this video a like